everyone. Uh, welcome to Obi Talks. Uh, today, for uh, our uh, new episode, I've invited uh, my friends. Uh, I think they're initially they're actually from India, but uh, they're living in Bahrain. They both are uh, artists. They majorly, you know, do 3D art or murals. So. Uh, I will, uh, let's welcome uh, Limnesh Bhai and Jinsi Bhabi for uh, our uh, this episode of Obi Talks. So thank you very much, uh, both of you, for you know joining me for this uh, podcast. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Obi. Uh, it was a pleasure to join you in the Obi Talks. We have seen a couple of uh, episodes you have done already, and it's uh, really good, you know, to introduce uh, friends and. Uh, Especially, uh, we are a small community as yeah. of artists, and uh, you know, uh, and we have been knowing for a long time. So it's a good to have a discussion. And yes, uh, we are from India, and of course, we are uh, you know uh, India and Pakistan, and uh, that connection itself uh, brings us you know like uh, brothers and sisters. That that connection itself uh, brings us uh, together. Yeah, so it's it's a pleasure. Great, great, great. So, uh, like I said, I welcome you to on my podcast. So let's just, you know, begin with the question. Since I know you guys are uh, artists, uh, but I also do not know more than that. That what? Uh, so please, uh, you know, introduce yourself. Like, uh, like you've already mentioned that you guys are from uh, in Asia. You're actually from India and living in Bahrain. So tell us about like. Uh, when did you guys move to Bahrain and then how did you guys like start art? Was it like uh, you guys started it together? Uh, or, uh, you know, you guys were doing it before you were married. Since uh, all the art that I have seen uh, from both of you, you've been doing it together. So tell us about yourself, your beginnings and uh, your background uh, because people would you know, like to know. So uh, basically, uh, my parents were in Bahrain. So uh, I was, uh, you know, after my studies, I came uh, to Bahrain and uh, started my, my career. So it was with the government uh, here. And then, uh, you know, uh, after a long time, like uh, after my engineering, I never did art. Actually, I never got involved into arts because till then I was very much uh, involved in arts, uh, even from my childhood. But after engineering, it was a long, uh, you know, disconnect. Then... Uh, uh, time came uh, wherein I saw a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, forwards and stuff like that with 3D painting. So wanted to do some experiments and that's how it all started. In uh, 2008, uh, it started. So once this experiment, uh, experiment started, then, uh, uh, you know, we got uh, like, uh, wanted to try something large. And uh, that's where, uh, you know, that time I did my PMP and, uh, you know, wanted to apply the project management into art as well. So learned a lot of experiments as well. So that's how, uh, you know, got into connected with a lot of people. And then uh, we organized uh, a 3D, uh, the largest uh, 3D painting Guinness record event. So basically when I uh, did that uh, event, I got connected with a lot of uh, people from all over the world uh, due to that. And uh, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell him, you know, he was meant to do 3D. The reason was he's never happy with the canvas. He always wants something very big. <laughs> so I tell him like, okay, you had to get into 3D anyhow it is. Then I think it was around 2013. Yeah. So Lim had his first Guinness record and I was back in Mumbai, still in college. So yeah. uh, we had a small mural team back then and uh, we were like trying to learn 3D basically. So uh, that was something which was very fascinating to everyone at that time. And we wanted to try it too. That's how I started searching in Facebook for someone who could teach me how to do 3D. <laughs> <laughs> and it just turned out that Limnesh is from the same hometown. Like <clears throat> I'm practically born and brought up in Mumbai, and uh, but we do belong to the same hometown back in Kerala. Uh, there is a town called Kochi. That's where we both are from. So then I just found him in Facebook and I messaged him saying like, "Hi, can you teach me paintings?" But he was very busy. Of course, he didn't <laughs> see my message. He didn't respond to me quite a while. And then it took a lot of time to convince you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Then uh, like that, we got connected. Actually, uh, that's what, like art is the reason why even we got married. <laughs> okay, wow. Really. So, I think I yeah. that. Uh, so it's, wow. <laughs> yeah, so 
uh, that's how uh, you know we got connected and then uh, then we our interests uh, are almost the same especially yeah. when it comes to 3d painting and of course during the beginning years there was a lot of fight because both our styles are very different we had two <laughs> different styles and uh, you know at painting when you itself we used to yeah we used fight. to have fight then <laughs> <laughs> because the reason was uh, he is like a abstract artist more of a, and i am a more detailed artist so we had these uh, like uh, he's of this idea like of a 3d painting is very big you You just need to uh, be detailed in the area in the which is visible, yeah. yeah, which is visible to people. And I was like, it doesn't matter how big the painting is; detail have to be there from the bottom till the top part, you know. So also, you know, in terms of sketching and stuff like that, uh, she was into more detail. So yeah. we had this uh, disconnect initially. We had but to reach a rhythm, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Then uh, I think within uh, one or two years, yeah. uh, that rhythm came, and now it's like uh, we know. Like, it's more fun actually yeah, because fun. now uh, we don't have to discuss anything. Thing, there is no need for any trial discussion as such. The moment you see the sketch, you know, okay, these parts are meant for me. These parts are meant for him. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so every time it's uh, more of you know, like um, uh, once we start, we start from two different sides, and then uh, we come, then uh, we will exchange the roles yeah. in between. Okay. So it's it's fun, by, uh, it's fun uh, to have you know painting as a connect between us. And even in the beginning, when we start with the grids, he will get the grids ready for me, so I can rest that time, and then I'll start with the sketching, and that time he can rest. So it goes in that way. <laughs> And um, uh, one more thing, like uh, what we understood from uh, painting is like even after the um, the very busy office schedules, uh, this is the most uh, you know relaxing kind of a uh, uh, relief from all. Uh, you know all your headache and yeah. like uh, this is the one which uh, art is the one which connects us and uh, uh, get us more involved into and it's it's a very it's relaxing thing that, yeah. that keeps us happy always you know like uh, we have something to look forward to every now and then and then we are going to paint new things we want to do something different and uh, it doesn't matter if it's 10 o'clock at night 12 o'clock at night even 2 o'clock at night we yeah. still get into that <laughs> so that's something yeah, which so we always like look forward to yeah. about us <laughs> right so i was going to ask this uh, a little later on uh, this question of uh, what's your you know you know how do you come up with ideas or inspirations or what's your design process like but since you guys have already mentioned like you've already talked about the design bits so how do you since and you work in uh, in a in in form of a team you know you both work together so how do you like uh, come up with a design idea like do you guys both be brainstorm together or is like it's one one of you come up with an idea and then the then both of you you know combine and you know, start gathering references or doing sketches and then you guys decide on which sketch to go with or uh, you like how is your design process like because most of the artists we see they work alone uh, or at least most of them one of them is a lead artist like i know leon kier he works with uh, another artist so basically uh, leon does a drawing uh, designing work and everything so how do you guys like uh, divide the roles when it comes to designing is it like one of you do the design work or like you guys take turn or whoever has the best idea will lead the project actually what i think is when your partner is your wife you can't try to be the leader there you know <laughs> that would be the first point <laughs> and uh, usually uh, you know like uh, when it comes to the themes uh, uh, when we hear a particular uh, theme of uh, for a painting so first thing what we will do is like uh, we'll decide whether it's a uh, you know a comedy uh, like uh, something uh, you know cartoonish uh, style or uh, it's a comedy uh, based theme for kids or yeah. if it is a serious theme if it is a serious theme then i will leave it for her okay if it is a you know something uh, uh, cartoonish and uh, something then she uh, uh, has this idea about 3d painting being fun and interactive so even if my focus like a, will be more on yeah, that even if it's a complex theme he will try to make it very simple and something that people can understand the theme being very narrative you know like there is a story behind it and you can explain it to people too and they can enjoy the painting too that's like basically how his idea works yeah. and he will just prepare a hand sketch first because we are not that good with photoshop <laughs> actually uh, that's one thing which uh, we still <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. are learning photoshop so what we do is uh, like basically we prepare a hand sketch and then uh, usually she puts colors in it so and then we get photoshop into it and then uh, start uh, working on the uh, image uh, blending so, in photoshop is quite bad so we will have pieces of it and then and we'll we take, we carry like multiple sheets 
uh, with the like not the final image as such but multiple sheets and then we try to do the sketching so that's why like we can split e- each other very yeah. easily like the whole project okay mostly the theme is always like that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we're very interesting because uh, i have not seen uh, many artists like uh, who are actually husband and wife and they work in like they both work on one project so it's very interesting to know your uh, you know design processes and everything so uh, like let's go back to the 2008 or 2013 era when you guys were like yeah. you know uh, finding way to learn 3d art so how did you like uh, like i think lim lim they started uh, it first in 2008 back in 2008 so how did you like uh, uh, learn it or you know find out about techniques because did do you uh, did you like do it through internet like uh, because i i had a similar process that i tried looking uh, for techniques on internet but there wasn't much material available so exactly exactly how did you, like, start with it because uh, lincy is told that uh, you help uh, with uh, yeah you know, techniques so how did you learn uh, in the first place yeah uh, starting um, like um, for the starting phase uh, i was more into like you know uh, same as your background like more into engineering background mm-hmm. so do uh, that helped a lot like started with uh, the my so first into geometry shapes yeah geometry and uh, shapes so i started uh, using autocad that was the uh, first method of uh, starting the 3d painting designing so but one of the limitation which i encountered was uh, like uh, when we uh, use uh, this one to generate autocad to generate we were limited to the geometrical shapes because see i was not that good at uh, um, autocad i was okay okay kind of so i was more of using you know the cube the shapes like uh, um, a sphere cube and uh, merging all these together and uh, doing the basic shapes and then stretching it out and preparing the sketches so that was the initial process but once i started going into festivals and i saw other actually it was a learning process and uh, to be frank still we are learning like uh, painting is a field where we don't have any anyway like every other field like there is no limit in uh, learning like everyone has its, their own techniques so we started going into festivals and there we uh, found out that okay there was a simple techniques using strings which can give you a very uh, good uh, you know like a perspective uh, 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 geometry mm-hmm. and uh, that uh, also uh, once we saw these things then i started you know putting back to my drawing board like uh, then i started using the compass and <laughs> compass protractor and all that and started tracing it out okay uh, how we can take this uh, perspective uh, and uh, make it more simple on the site because uh, definitely like obey the, you you also might have a lot of experience like when we go on site it's something different from a drawing board like especially when you're draw, uh, painting on road the road curvature itself it matters a lot because uh, the curvature like it's not a, like a plane surface so when that curvature is there to compensate for that curvature it's always better to use the strings and compensate so when i started using uh, like um, a mix of these two techniques it became evident that okay this is something which will work like you have to use both geometry as well as the strings so then uh, also i had gone through like uh, yes uh, it was not possible from uh, internet to find a lot of things but uh, perspectives like she started uh, learning about perspectives a lot uh, mm-hmm. especially because to study so when she started even that time only i also started looking into those books like a lot of books from masters and these books helped us a lot in understanding the perspectives like understanding means not only uh, what we are doing right now but also there are a lot of advanced techniques uh, to how to make it in on the uh, you know um, roof and uh, how we can make a lot of different uh, techniques even the tilted uh, uh, way uh, like the tilted uh, rectangle how we can make it and you know a lot of things like that so these things uh, helped us a lot and uh, still we are learning in the learning process actually uh, in lim's case uh, the years when he started that's like back in 2008 when he had just started uh, he was trying to understand 3d painting and but he ended up developing a new art form all by himself uh, actually that's a <laughs> fact yeah <laughs> because that time his main interest was basically mathematics and science so he used to play with geometry he used to play with figures 
he he wanted to see what lenticular means and he was experimenting on those fields and he just like all these all yeah. these like retrospective painting uh, then lenticular uh, painting and that's how um, i actually uh, invented something called trendicular like uh, a triple perspective uh, a painting where mm -hmm. you can see three different images using triangular prism and um, i did a lot of uh, you know experiments that time but only thing is uh, those experiments were causing a lot of uh, you know financial <laughs> it was quite expensive to make it, it was actually, expensive yeah. because we had to use uh, you know i had to learn molding like fiberglass molding techniques then um, also uh, you know gypsum molding kind of uh, things and then a um, lot of trial and errors even uh, metal uh, you know metallurgy uh, some <laughs> some kind of thing that's why uh, like we had to do a lot of things but then uh, uh, it was you know it was not found to be uh, it was effective but uh, from the uh, commercial point of view it was not that effective so that's how you know we stopped and uh, stick on to this uh, 3d painting alone because anamorphic uh, as such it's good feel a lot of uh, possibilities there but when it comes to commercial part it is yeah, and it, it was not practically possible to take it uh, to other countries for display also because yeah. every time we get stuck in customs and customs. we have to clear it and things like and, that and uh, it will delay the whole process like our trip will be planned for uh, 10 days max and then we had to spend some time uh, in the customs both uh, to and as well as fro <laughs> so but still it's like uh, everyone loves it and we too love it because yeah. it's like you know you can create a single image i mean three images in a single painting yeah. so it's yeah. fun to work with yeah. but uh, still it's very expensive to make it yeah. <laughs> so like when you come to 3d painting uh, the reason is uh, in the beginning uh, we had to go to a chalk festival to come back with tons of ideas basically yeah. so you get to know all these ideas about making your painting look good making your your part look attractive and sometimes uh, we learn like even uh, simple techniques like uh, on the strings uh, not only you know like perspective lines but also some other techniques which they used to make the grids grids like, yes every grids. now and then we have to come up with new ideas for making the grids because uh, what we have noticed is in a painting making the grids take maximum of the time you know yeah. so uh, getting the grids done and getting the sketch done that itself will take tons once of the grid time is ready at least uh, your sketch uh, you can say okay it will take maybe 3 uh, to 4 hours yeah. but uh, making the grid in a place where you know um, and we are still not like <laughs> perfect and we try every technique every now and then you know and we get back to the normal technique at end we even tried you know making it with uh, uh, ropes like this uh, gluing it together and it worked at one place but when <laughs> second place it didn't the work. second place when we wrapped it up then we couldn't even open it up because that net was not working at all so we yeah, yeah. we left that now we have got one more idea which we need to try out in the next <laughs> art festival so that is something you are always experimenting and studying and you know like just by talking with as you get such ideas okay mm -hmm. this time we are going to try the cardboard idea let's see how it will go and uh, obed of course uh, you your uh, ideas also it's like uh, you know you work a lot with geometry we have seen it like lot with geometry so those experiments also inspire us yeah i mean it's good to see like uh, yeah. when uh, more and more ideas coming we totally love some of your works actually yeah <laughs> yeah so yet it's been like uh, i also like struggle with uh, the grid part because it's very tiring and time consuming and i think every artist uh, struggles with it uh, and uh, i've also tried quite a few techniques myself you know using ropes or strings and what not but uh, and you know even i tried you know doing a stencil as well that you know, that might help but uh, nothing uh, like you guys said nothing actually works all the time so i remember when i was going uh, for my first festival in germany so i was kind of nervous because uh, I have I hadn't any experience of you know working in public like uh, that and and then there is a time constraint as well so it was like a very challenging thing for me and then I in, in Germany I tried with the ropes and it worked so I went there a couple of years and the rope thing worked but similarly I was in Dubai uh, for the Dubai Canvas Festival in 2018 and uh, there I tried the rope thing and it didn't work so I had to like do <laughs> the grid uh, manually and it was like and it was very hot and uh, extremely tiring so yeah it's it's continuous learning uh, process as you guys have you know mentioned even now since I have a background in uh, 
architecture so i studied you know perspective and drafting and it actually helps me a lot uh, when doing all these geometric artworks that uh, i do so yeah that that learning that i did in art school uh, is very helpful in uh, so this brings me to another question that uh, since you guys mentioned that uh, you guys uh, you know when you started going to the festivals there you there the actual learning you know again where you started seeing other artists and you got many ideas for your art as well and learned many different techniques so when did you like start going to the festivals and uh, which one uh, which festival did you guys go to uh, or which was the first one where you go to or uh, and did you guys go there together or you Limnesh, you went there first and then uh, so how how did it you know start for you guys the festival yeah we heard the question but uh, when we were about to answer, answer it got it got disconnected okay, so you guys... i think we can uh, start answering yeah yeah you can start answering. so actually yeah. yeah, actually, you both started from the same festival. His first festival was the Willem Seven One Two. Willem right? Seven, <laughs> that was my first festival. Yeah, that was in, in 2013. Uh, 2013. Yeah, 13. 13. Yeah, <laughs> it was in 2013. Yeah. And uh, then uh, the immediate next one was uh, Atlantic City, I yeah. believe. Yeah. And then, then Sarasota. Then Sarasota. So, like that. Uh, that was all in 2013. Then it was uh, repeat. Like uh, a lot of festivals were there. Like in uh, uh, Germany. No, in mostly. 2014, we took a break. Uh, to ah, 2014, uh, we took a break from festivals because, because uh, we wanted to learn more. Actually, he had gone to three festivals by that time, and he had seen, as I told you, he got tons of ideas, and he wanted to try it on, on his own by that time. Hmm. And we thought, you know, the best place, especially when we go to festivals, one thing you notice. Is is, uh, there are too many European artists, too many artists from US, but very few artists from our part of the world, you know. Like so, from India or Pakistan or Bang like no, all of us. Yeah. yeah, even Middle East, there is no uh, artist as such. Uh, so so uh, that was one basic idea, the reason that we wanted to go for a road trip in India, which is from Kashmir to Kanyamari, that is the north part of India to the south part of India. Of India. And uh, it was around 75 days, and we were stopping at places, uh, making 3D painting there, and even taking workshops for kids and adults so that you know everyone is introduced to this form of art and uh, that time what we did was we tried to teach them as much as uh, possible like uh, how to do 3d paintings on uh, you know uh, how to do it on floor and at least the basic crack the basic, and you know like and even uh, the chalk the they're using the chalk yeah. and uh, making the uh, 3d and you know we were introducing basically like it was a 3d painting workshops a series of 3d painting workshops i think 22 locations yeah. we had uh, done it so from uh, north to uh, south and and right before that we had uh, we wanted to uh, because we were not uh, used to going to india and doing works because uh, as uh, and we have already mentioned lim has been in Bahrain for around like many many years he is mm. in Bahrain from 2004 so uh, we had to go back to india and like you know first show people that okay there are three painting artists like us we have been, we are interested in doing this particular work because of course we need sponsorship to do a road trip you know it's quite expensive again and that's how we came up with the coffee mosaic idea mm. uh, um, where we did a, a coffee cup mosaic and uh, of sachin tendulkar so you know to attract, <laughs> to attract yeah, people. He's like so, the legend of India. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that way. Everywhere. Yeah, and uh, and due to that we got sponsorship very quickly. <laughs> yes. Like she was the one who arranged. Uh, and it was an interesting yeah. thing to work with also because my uh, I have a group of friends who are very interested in doing such works and uh, I just had to call them and they were all ready. Okay, wow, this is fun to do. And uh, and uh, one good thing is like they are still connected yes. and uh, they are doing, uh, like some of them are still uh, doing 3D painting as their, uh, you know, uh, one of the... Many uh, of them actually. Yeah. Some of them are art teachers and <laughs> some of them are taking this into profession and trying to do 3D even though like, you know, they're more into the graphic side of it. Hmm. Um, uh, and many of them, some of have got into tattoo, tattooing, tattooing and yeah. Yeah, they tattoo 3D now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, at least, uh, you know, um, uh, now uh, we are uh, thinking about uh, doing something similar. Like yeah. uh, we want to introduce more and more people into this uh, art form because a lot of artists are there. Like uh, in our I mean, part of no the world, there is no point in holding secrets, you know, yeah. like it's so, fun when everyone is there in it. So at least if we can convey this ideas uh, like uh, how to do it and then they get introduced and they start uh, doing it and practicing it then uh, definitely more and more people will come into these uh, festivals so that is something which we want to uh, achieve 
and uh, 3d printing we believe is something that gives artists unlimited freedom you know you can actually explore more and more because there is no limit as such and the canvas size is uh, not limited yeah. so that is one thing which uh, gives us uh, freedom like to do as much as we want especially for ones who enjoy working outside because uh, even when we were like working on the canvases we were not uh, very happy you know sitting in the studio sitting inside your home and doing the work we always wanted to go to open air and work you know and have fun with the nature and then kind of draw that all so uh, especially if you like working outside i would ask everyone you know just to give it a try uh, be it 3d printing or madonnery art whatever or mural you can, yeah, yeah or whatever or a mural yes whatever you are interested in but at least get to that that is something which gives you a lot of freedom and initially it might be a little difficult because especially to work in the harsh sun and you know uh, the climate and all that might affect your uh, work but that ability that is just uh, you know uh, an initial uh, so but once you get into it then uh, it will be a non stop so it will give you more freedom more uh, and you will start enjoying it and then uh, you know uh, you'll make wonders yeah. and What? sometimes there is one thing you know when you're sitting inside your home and then trying to complete a work you have this uh, way of getting lazy you know you just don't want to complete because your motivation just gets lost somewhere yeah. but when you're <laughs> outside you do have the time restriction you have to get it done if you wanted to see it completed you know so that kind of motivates you a lot and there is one point when we work outside we feel more happy right yes exactly <laughs> because uh, you know uh, one thing is like uh, it's like a puzzle solving like a lot of times uh, sometimes the light and shade uh, the, the way you start with a painting you might uh, need to change uh, certain things because of the shadow which casts on on your painting so that itself will give you a new challenge to work <laughs> and with. it happens quite a while because sometimes you all have your sketch ready with all the objects ready in it and then you go to the site and then limb measures it and tell me jinsi this is not going to work the road is completely curved <laughs> or maybe you will find some objects so you either you or you have to paint the whole thing and cover it up so yeah. <laughs> these kind of challenges will come on the road So, and then time and meeting people is also fun because when you are in the road you are not just enjoying yourself you are letting people around you enjoy too because uh, that is um, especially when it comes to art especially when it comes to our kind of art forms there is no uh, religious difference there is no political backgrounds there is no any difference as such even there is no language barrier i always tell him some of my best <laughs> artist friends are the ones who don't speak english or don't speak my mother tongue you know and i communicate with sign language and i even communicate in messenger <laughs> using only translation yeah so uh, when it using comes translation to translation and uh, you know the how we get lost in the uh, yeah. term so in the translation so even then uh, that communication happens and mostly sign language like <laughs> okay uh, that is one thing uh, we always tell uh, people like uh, art is something uh, which is inherent to us mm -hmm. and that is uh, like when you um, when you hear a term like or an object you all uh, you always have that object in your mind and it's not the word which makes it like it's not the language uh, which the, uh, which makes it it's always the image which comes into your mind so that is something like and when we want to express it okay if i am uh, hungry i can always show i am hungry <laughs> Uh, so and i'm tired like whatever you can express it between each other and actually starting from the year we started uh, like he said he started in 2013 and 2014 we had gone to the road trip and 2015 was my first year in the chalk festival and uh, starting from that time every chalk festival be it going back to sarasota it's like an experience we have been waiting for because we get back to the chalk family we get back to our friends we all speak the same language of art and you know like we get to learn more we get to know all of our works and and food and uh, that is one thing like we tried all our food like even our pani puri you know we made yeah. pani puri in the festival we made biryani, biryani in the festival <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun you know it's an exchange of many things and even like uh, we artists are very appreciative of each other that's something you don't see in any other field you know uh, when you go to a festival you don't feel jealous of people or you don't feel like you know oh they are, they are going better than us so <laughs> we have to do something good or something different and it's not like that no every it's time like, we get some new ideas it's an inspiration yeah kind yeah. of and people actually come to you and tell you like you know would be remember that work that work that stroke was so good or the color you used was so good and we do the same thing too so like you know you building up relationships every now and then you go to the chalk festival every other chalk festival uh, ends up with making at least 10 more friends and people from different countries and them coming together for a lifetime right? yes exactly 
not only through facebook but also in uh, real life yeah <laughs> that's one thing we missed from the last one and a half years one and a half years, right? years we have been missing it yeah we come to that how the covid has uh, you know affected the whole art thing but uh, uh, from my last question i have like uh, three more questions popped up in my mind but uh, let's start with since you guys uh, kind of already told that uh, you find sponsor and stuff for the you know to find your uh, you find a uh, founder sponsor for to find your road trip in uh, india so like how often do you guys uh, go back to india uh, and do art there do you like get projects from india like street art projects or 3d art projects in different like malls and uh, other spaces or so for some brands do you get like invited to go to projects uh, and uh, since you guys go to many festivals as well so how do you guys uh, fund them like uh, do you find sponsors for each festival or do you fund them on your own like uh, from your day job as we call it so from do you find them from there so i like mixed a couple of questions so you can answer them like separately the india part and the uh, other festival part actually when we traveled uh, we just traveled to india now like in july mm-hmm. 2021 that was like after a long break like after 3 years we went back to india the last time we had gone was in 2018 so uh, traveling to india is not very frequent because uh, lim is having a full paid job here so he works from uh, 9 to 5 every day i mean uh, from sunday to thursday because friday and saturday is a weekend here and uh, because of the job we have around like uh, 30 days leave and we take in all the leaves we have like you know public holidays or the fridays and saturdays that come in between we it we compensate all yeah. that and uh, take so our we kind of combine it together and we split it into parts and that's how we actually go to the different festivals and because going into the festivals we uh, normally miss out going to india to visit our parents so we have to either call them here or like uh, just go there and like you know spend five days or four days with them and come back <laughs> it's very short so we don't have day. much time to do uh, events in india so basically because that four five days we have to spend with the parents and i otherwise call them here and uh, spend with them so and in our case sometimes when we get projects also we have the same issue because uh, we do need to have leave to travel to so we try to go to uh, projects or anything that kind of comes in the adjust in weeks of the festival so it's like we have the festival one weekend and the weeks are right next to it if you get some projects or some events during that time we usually take it up. Uh, so we just uh, increase the time of the festival you know, for like you know 10 days and try to do as much work yeah, whatever as possible. we have to fit in within this uh, 30 days leave and <laughs> yeah. you know, the, uh, the off days so that's yeah. how we usually uh, do and i and, usually don't travel alone <laughs> yeah so, so that's we both why, travel together yeah. so we are doing it uh, like that so uh, that's one reason about projects and uh, of course uh, after the road trip we have been getting a lot of offers for the project some of them we gave back to our friends uh, as as we told like yeah. uh, when we uh, traveled and did this uh, event in india so that time we got a lot of uh, you know students uh, not students exactly like artists who got into 3d painting and stuff like that so whenever we get any uh, queries inquiries we just reroute it to them like because if it's uh, from delhi or something like we reroute it to some of them uh, in uh, who stays near to delhi and all and if it's uh, south india then we do uh, similarly like like that we uh, usually uh, give the projects to them so that you know uh, they also can get to uh, the projects and stuff and then uh, they can get the opportunity and uh, meet them so that is one way uh, we are doing it And, and sometimes with projects and chalk festivals we do prioritize chalk festivals more so because we uh, believe in going into more and more pos- uh, chalk festivals if possible you know <laughs> because that's because uh, projects what happens is like we are limited to that uh, you know that project alone and uh, we won't be interacting with the artists and you know it will be like more of a commercial event so what we do is like we prioritize chalk festivals for that Uh, more than that so and commercial events comes with a lot of rules too yeah the commercial event that is one of the problem like any other art uh, art form or even you know i have heard graphical designers also saying that like their creativity will be uh, restricted like because they have their priorities mm. so it's not about the art which is being but about the brand promotions or something like that so that's why um, uh, we may not be into you know the same uh, terms 
when it comes to so we have our priorities as uh, artists so that is where we uh, that's one of the reason why we prefer chalk festivals more <laughs> and yes about uh, funding the chalk festivals because we are yeah. not re uh, really ready to do religious promotions or political promotions and such things come uh, in between it because many of the times um, during elections or such times uh, those are the times when people approach us more yeah and uh, it's not very practically possible us for uh, us to do a work that we don't believe in you know whatever you do you have to believe it in right yeah so it's not about money it's about <laughs> because see uh, one thing what we always uh, believe is uh, uh, like all these splits in terms of uh, uh, the nationality or because we have been traveling a lot and we have explored a lot also like and uh, people are same everywhere like it doesn't matter like where you are from or where are you or what religion or what caste or you know those things doesn't matter at all like being uh, people uh, and um, uh, people are trying to survive like they are trying to meet uh, their ends whether it's in germany whether it's in us whether it's here whether it's uh, india in pakistan it doesn't matter like people are not uh, much concerned politics about the politics for politicians yeah. you know it's not for normal people who's trying to earn their yeah. <laughs> daily bread <laughs> yeah so Uh, that is one thing uh, so uh, uh, that's why um, like we take up uh, and prioritize the chalk festivals more and uh, not on the projects and uh, we only do works if we can show what we want to show yeah like <laughs> our themes have to be something that we select our themes have to showcase our qualities so that's why uh, those are the kind of even uh, the first uh, um, guinness world record what uh, the painting what we did was uh, let's shuffle the world for peace or peace for peace let's shuffle the world for peace were in you know uh, india meets uh, us or uh, pakistan or like all the countries it's like a rubik cube the world is like a rubik cube so a rubik cube when you shuffle every color meets every other color even though you can make like you can make a perfect uh, <laughs> rubik cube by uh you know uh, shuffling it back but uh, then that is not what uh, we are intended to. like we would like to make it as a shuffled uh, rubik cube wherein every other like there is no uh, barrier as such and there is no limit like you can I meet think the main other. reason for it is like you know we come from the southmost tip of india the <laughs> state that is in the southmost tip just near to the sea so uh, i believe that part was never affected by any war or like you know that part was not actually uh, politically involved in any of the matters that happened in that subcontinent so uh, from a young age we don't see any political difference between anyone be it like um, of course we eat like with pakistan or we eat like with europeans because everyone travels to that particular place it's a port with, it's a port yeah, yeah. so basically that's the only <laughs> state in india where you will see like 30% christians 30% hindus and 30% muslims kind of you know like equally they are divided and uh, that is one thing which connects us uh, like yeah. when we uh, especially when we travel to uh, some other places we see a lot of uh, you know difference uh, in the people there in uh, especially in from our part uh, we in schools and there is no uh, difference like everyone we have a lot of uh, friends and we don't even uh, check like from which community you are or there is no barrier like that i mean that's the way we were brought up and that is one thing which we give us a lot of uh, you know a wide uh, uh, vision on uh, uh, seeing these things and you know um, um, uh, keeping aside the, the politics and uh, the religion and all uh, from our Uh, paintings and themes and all that so that's why we have to say no to many of the commercial projects and then it comes to uh, projects which have a theme uh, but they don't have money to fund us in such cases for example if it's like an uh, artistic institute or if it's like an orphanage or a rehabilitation center uh, many a times we do choose to work for free even if it's like you know uh, even we have yeah. to fund uh, for yeah. the for it like I mean, we have uh, to take not the not every artist will agree with us in that case because uh, i do know many people who do believe that you know if you do an artwork you have to get paid but mm. um, sometimes um, you have to like you know do it for free because uh, it makes many people happy like um, for us we do have these experience back in 2014 when we went the road trip we travel from the north part uh, almost till a city called bangalore when we reached bangalore we were pretty tired working in all the malls, malls. it was yeah. it, it was profitable for us uh, to work in the malls and you know get people uh, uh, on commercial side but uh, the thing is we lost uh, that uh, you know what we started it for like we were uh, asking each other like what is the objective uh, with which we started this thing so mm -hmm. our objective was not to make money our objective was to uh, make us happy so for that 
uh, and when we see how the people in the malls reacted to the painting like they were just looking at it okay yeah they are doing something and it's just uh, just another event that's it for them they just walk by like and they don't even appreciate it yeah. for us but for them it's just something they see in a usual mall unusual any any other thing, activation yeah. so that is where we discussed and we decided okay now from now on we will shift our focus let's uh, go to uh, orphanages so actually like we stopped the yeah. funding by then and then we started funding on our own hmm. and uh, we uh, we didn't know where to start from because that was not planned you know uh, there were malls planned even in bangalore and even to the cities down there but uh, we wanted to change the course totally so um we uh, kind of just stayed at his uh, sister's place for one week and then we were like rearranging and reshifting all the plans as to where we need to go next what we have to do next and uh, uh, then we decided like you know we went to the first orphanage it was uh, working uh, under don busco the don busco association organization so we went there and we had a talk with uh, one of the person there and they told me that uh, okay today you can work with our orphanage and uh, but the kids are very small so like you know they are like uh, below 13 14 15 so you have to um, i don't know how much they will understand that was their problem that time but the moment we started working we realized that they understand more than us <laughs> but it painting. was a very I mean, it was uh, a really experience uh, for different us. experience yeah, yeah the reason was um, when we were working we saw kids that were very tiny you know like very tiny very small and uh, i told him like you know they said the kids are like 12 13 14 and the kids all look like they are 5 and 6 why is it so you know like uh, some kids look like 7 years old and all they had was a bit of a belly and they were very small in size I mean, and uh, we were not sure about what the case was that time and that's when the father when was telling us yeah. yeah the father was telling us because they are malnutrition uh, they are just developing now you know that's the reason many of them because they were street kids and mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, they had uh, lack of food and all that nutrition that uh, made them look like that like short and then uh, then uh, from there we got a lot of connections yeah and like, then we understood you know wow we have taken the right part because uh, it's not about teaching them about perspectives it's about making a sketch for them and, and getting them all paint. the buckets of paint and then they will rush down color that area and come that back and say that, uh, uncle where is the next color i need to paint this now <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we went to uh, other places like uh, you know no. and they, they uh, suggested a lot many places for us and they suggested a very beautiful location it's like in uh, actually two locations one of them was right in between a forest uh, you know like far off from the village and uh, it, it was surrounded by um, it was a rehabilitation mountains. center yeah, it, it was, was basically a rehabilitation yeah. center for gadi kids so we just uh, went there anyhow we thought like you know let's take that up let's see how it's going to be yeah. so it's like a boys center and they uh, they had been rehabilitated for many cases of drug addiction and things like that and the first question we kind of asked them was why exactly do you have your uh, institution in such an isolated area i mean is that safe and the reason they told us was before they had the same institution in between a city and it used to happen that people used to throw them drugs from outside outside the just to you know in invite them outside yeah. so this kind of uh, thing was uh, really and, and uh, uh, i the... was uh, <laughs> i was kind of scared going there in the beginning because uh, those kids were not very young you know like they were in their 18s and above so i was like uh, how are we going to actually uh, approach talk them. To, yeah, yeah approach them because uh, they might be you know totally not interested in this this is something that few of the people like not everyone likes but the moment we started they made us uh, you know you won't believe like that's the uh, maximum number of paintings we did during the road trip they yeah. made us paint first we, we did uh, to stay for 3 days they extended the stay around 9 days and uh, we don't know what happened exactly there we started everything <laughs> they wanted to paint you know they're like uh, they're dance auntie, room uncle this is our dance room this is where we dance during fly days and uh, we want uh, it painted with michael jackson's wig and <laughs> like that <laughs> then they had some uh, place in the in the forest yeah. there a place where they used to you know do their picnic so there was a, a very big uh, a rock kind rock. of thing and on the rock we painted like they made us paint the i mean that was a really uh, wonderful experience then we did a similar uh, uh, paintings in uh, attapadi attapadi that was again a tribal village 
were uh, you know the parents again of- the story was very fascinating yeah. this is one thing when you tra- uh, when you work in different places uh, it's never about money there you know it's about the satisfaction you get and when we went to this particular tribe uh, they not they are not orphans yeah. but, uh, but uh, their parents live inside the forest which is not approachable by uh, by any vehicle. means like road, road vehicles uh, will not uh, go inside so like they are the original tribal so you can't reach them by any means even the bike or the jeep or things like that so that's why uh, their kids are kind of staying in this boarding facility and where they can get proper education that's the reason that um, institution was functioning there. and one of the reason why they, uh, they are staying there is because of food you know the parents were ready to uh, bring the kids uh, for this uh, education is uh, because of food because uh, there uh, it's very uh, tough because especially with the you know uh, the rules and all uh, like they cannot uh, do a lot of things which they were permitted before so these tribals they used to have some lifestyle so that is one of the things which we uh, we uh, when you take the tribals and bring them to our own uh, culture we try to bring them in the so called civilization the they civilization. are losing their identity totally yeah because, because they neither... used to have uh, some lifestyle and we are changing it totally and then we are making them poor in that way. like we bring those rules and giving them unnecessary addictions like yeah. alcohol and things like that it's and most of them were addicted to alcohol uh, and uh, that is one of the thing which we uh, realize like uh, that uh, this uh, even and the, the government funds them very well you know like the government gives them free food every month and things like that but that too uh, even the uh, institution we were working when they were also providing free food for them monthly like you know a grocery kit kind of thing and we but, we went to yeah. like we went together with them to supply this we just this. wanted to make sure like you know these things are happening correct you know so then what we understood like they were uh, 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 like all these new packets the thing was they were opening all the packets <laughs> opening all the packets and then, then we were like it. this is very bad like why exactly are you opening the packets how will they use it i mean won't they feel weird if you open it but then they told us a story behind it and we like oh god such things also happen because uh, what they do is like um, um, uh, this uh, especially the father they they will be addicts alcohol addicts and uh, they want to get money so when they give this free food packets which is unopened packets they will sell it to the shops and get the money and buy drinks So, so once that is you the reason why open the packet and then give them then they don't have an option of selling it back you know so, so they, they break will... all the seals of all the covers and materials they so give so all them. like rice uh, horlicks like all these uh, health drinks and all that yeah, milk, because the kids are everything there and they, they uh, uh, pick it open and give it to them Uh, milk powder and stuff like it's that it's not like the government is not trying the government even formed a band for them taught them how to like you know uh, play music and stuff like that and formed the band started giving them projects related to that but there is one thing because these people were not used to such a culture so you pull them out from there you put them in a new atmosphere and it's not very easy for them to merge with adapt. the atmosphere yeah, yeah, that adapt. adaptation uh, is not happening so <laughs> Uh, that is one of the uh, thing which uh, that was know. again a very different experience for us and again it was in between the forest where uh, tigers not tigers some other thing puli what is puli yeah, uh, leopard 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 yes leopard and uh, elephants come out you know <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we were uh... and there was a very small guy there uh, he was like a trainee uh, because this was a religious institution uh, some christian institution so he was learning to be a priest or something like that uh, so he was called brother and this particular brother was very young you know 17 18 years or something and very tiny also he was a very small fellow and uh, he told us uh, last week <laughs> uh, i just got up in, in the night uh, to see what was there some sound came up and then i he realized even outside even <laughs> outside he saw a big rock which was not there before and uh, suddenly uh, he realized that that is that is an elephant it's not a rock it's an elephant <laughs> <laughs> and he got so scared <laughs> then he was uh, like he was uh, sick for almost one week <laughs> and he told us you know only yesterday we woke so don't try exploring the forest at night not very practical to do that <laughs> so if uh, so the, these kind of experiences like yeah. our oh, experiences what uh, matters to us as an artist so it always gives us more and more ideas and then even in travanta we did something like that uh, we actually went back to, uh, when we went back to info park that's actually like you know a place where most of his friends work an it hub kind of thing so he was like having 3d painting with all his friends there <laughs> yeah and uh, uh, and some and some of the places uh, and in especially one of the place i don't want to name it but uh, what we understood was like uh, uh, that place um, uh, the uh, just the day before there was an uh, uh, an unfortunate 
the event happened and no one was concerned unfortunate event means one um, suicide happened and it was a commercial place and the next day they want us to paint the, the same spot and we were like uh, i mean this is how uh, business works you know like they are not even concerned nothing is and that uh, the That's guy when who... you really understand the world is very materialistic and uh, many a times when our friends ask us you know why do you opt working for free i mean uh, sometimes you need to do it there is uh, this uh, we are not looking for satisfaction yeah, yeah when it of comes... course we do like uh, you know if we get commercial projects and if it can fund us because it's not a very um, healthy way of like you know funding yourself um, all together because it can't turns out to be very expensive and sometimes you have to even take up your savings to do that hmm. but uh, still at times um, it becomes necessary and if of course we get commercial works that gives us the freedom that we are looking for of course we are all in for that yeah <laughs> Okay. And uh, um, about the festivals, uh, yeah. like how uh, we go for the festivals. Actually, uh, we started getting an invitation for the festivals from his first Guinness record, which was in 2012. Yeah. Uh, After that, I yeah. got. Oh, yeah. Actually, it was noted by Planet Street Painting, right? Because yes. they had uh, the record first before that. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, that project was actually funded. Like uh, that project was very expensive. It was around twenty thousand dinar, right? uh the uh, guinness record yeah, yeah the guinness record fun. event was very expensive of course we had to get funding for it because it was the size of a football stadium yeah. and uh, yeah it was a very big uh, even i was not there i still missed it <laughs> <laughs> it was a pure project management anyway it was <laughs> it was not about art it was more about uh, uh, geometry yeah the one he said you know like the shuffling one yeah, yeah. and uh, then comes the chalk festivals uh, once the chalk festival so started festivals uh, they uh, usually fund us fund us in the sense uh, like they will pay for the uh, trip and uh, they will pay, uh, they will uh, give the materials and uh, even uh, the stay and food and all that and some But of them even provide the compensation the compensation also yeah. some of the festivals they provide the compensation also extra like uh, it depends on uh, festivals to festival each one so uh, and uh, like what we do is like if we get a compensation then uh, we mostly uh, you know we uh, uh, in all the festivals we take a uh, uh, drive around and you know we stay some extra days we explore the place and uh, we spend it out and finish it <laughs> off and come back <laughs> that's yeah. what we do and we do ask them to give us a service apartment too we always uh, yeah. do that like uh, um, you might be uh, you know well aware like, like being from this part of the world uh, food becomes an we do like exploring all the cuisines but, uh, but uh, as, as a we daily, stay a bit longer it yeah. would, i mean it's okay for him he is okay with any type of food he enjoys it very lot a lot too but for me i do need my rice and my dal and my curry too so <laughs> i have to end up being in a service apartment and i do cook for myself then and um, and i do cook for her <laughs> she does the cooking mostly during travel i have to say that because i'm very tired after work and she you know? needs uh, you know uh, tea proper tea like actually so... we learned that uh, in my first trip that was in 2015 when i went to sarasota and uh, we had a very nice project there so we were there for around 22 days and uh, uh, we were not that much planned because lim is always happy with every food and that's what i was expecting to because when i did the road trip i was very happy with the food because it was because indian because it food. was india i mean uh, anyway north to south uh, yeah. food is almost so <laughs> i never thought a food might be an issue for me because i i we believe that you know we love pizzas we love burgers so we can eat any food but that is only good for one day <laughs> that is something and, which uh, yeah, we yeah like. i mean like the steaks also so when we went to uh, uh, us the first days were really amazing the food was so good so tasty so different from my usual kind so i enjoyed the steak and we went to certain restaurants and we had all these you know like all the uh, us kind of cuisines and of course it was fun but once the painting started that's when i started craving for my own food because i wanted to fill up nicely before the events you know so then I and she said, wanted to have a each break she wanted to have a proper tea not yeah, uh, i wanted the... to have chai and it was not possible because uh, i didn't carry the tea powder with me and uh, i was not expecting that to that time and then of course i started getting violent i have to admit it because i started getting very angry with him and then we uh, started uh, you know we, we went, went to the for grocery shopping within one hour of that you know <laughs> then we went to grocery shopping and then we got uh, these items and when we started cooking yeah, when and... i had my first chai then i was like okay now i'm back to normal <laughs> so proper tea then uh, one thing we made like we made uh, our uh, artist group because we were all staying in the same place like in the same and i just noticed you know everyone ends up doing the same thing 
because we have had a, uh, in the same place there were mexican artists there were italian artists there were artists from germany there was artists from all the places actually because Russia, yeah it was nice it was a kind of thing so like you know you had your separate uh, houses service apartments setup. yeah, yeah service apartments yeah. and uh, so uh, what i noticed during the beginning is within 5 to 7 days everyone started cooking you know <laughs> everyone started making their own cuisines their own cuisines and then we started sharing each other and then we made them uh, you know a couple of them addicted to tea like we yeah. showed them how to make a tea proper uh, you know our our type of tea <laughs> and they totally so, love it now also because yeah. uh, chai when once you have it then it changes your life forever <laughs> <laughs> so and we uh, then uh, then only like uh, our uh, like when we cook for us we started sharing with them and uh, you know they also and then uh, we prepared a biryani one time and we didn't know how to make biryanis and then uh, we really uh, spoiled it you know like yeah. uh, the biryani so which we prepared that was a the point first because uh, <laughs> during 2014 uh, 15 15 we were not into cooking much because uh, we make basic rice or some curries or some fish fry or like you know uh, some beef or something like that but not more than that <laughs> then we so, told them uh, like okay uh, this is the biryani in our part of the <laughs> place this is not a, a <laughs> no you might the be... problem was you know they gave us this thing uh, believing that indians are vegetarians they asked us to make a vegetable biryani because most of them were vegans and like you know so uh, vegetarianism is not something and we are, uh, we are not uh, you know we always used to have beef and chicken and that's <laughs> Mutton, that's <fun. laughs> yes and without those things we don't know to cook anything actually so uh, that became a problem and we were trying to experiment how to make biryani it turned out quite bad i have to say but then of course uh, even here in bahrain Uh, till that time you were like with your parents and they cook for you and you don't even try how to on your stove or like you know use anything or even keep a pan on the gas you have to don't try it and then uh, you have to try cooking for your own and once you start you do understand you know uh, you cook the best food for yourself <laughs> you're not happy with anyone else's food so, so that's how the chow festivals work basically we get uh, enough to sustain them and if we get more we of course spend them we go for good. trips <laughs> we go for trips and shopping <laughs> yeah shopping yes that's fun thing <laughs> <laughs> right I, i'm really I, i really you know i'm enjoying uh, listening to you guys and your uh, experiences of different festivals and your work uh, you know your uh, work with uh, different organizations uh, it's uh, really you know fascinating for me to you know hear your uh, journey you guys have had so far so I think let's move on uh, with the question. I have actually written some questions, so I'm like, uh, you know, looking uh, through them. Which one should I ask now? So I have also noticed one thing that uh, you know, you guys uh, paint a lot uh, inside your house or your home as well. I have noticed uh, in some of the images that you know. So. Uh, i have a similar practice myself that uh, i have a very you know big roof uh, available so i did all my initial work or what all the practice work on my rooftop uh, all the experimentation and everything you know so on my rooftop so i have seen uh, the same thing for your house so do you guys like uh, remove them the artworks that you guys do for practice or uh, like how do you make space for new ones because uh, for myself uh, what happens is that uh, since the roof is uh, open air so generally the art gets uh, destroyed or it decays with time itself and uh, since the temp material that i use are temporary so generally whenever there is rain so i just you know take advantage of it and uh, you know take some uh, you know brooms and stuff with me and just clean them uh, clean them off and make space for new ones so how do you guys make space for new new art like do you paint them uh, paint over them how do you make space 
actually uh, if i have to start then i have to start from the time we got married so uh, from that time we have kind of like uh, since we are in bahrain we have to rent out apartments we live in rented apartments and uh, we kind of uh, shifted three apartments now right yeah. <laughs> so mostly it's like when we finish all the walls we kind of change the apartments okay that's not the story how it works the reason is uh, first he used to work with the ministry of interior Mm-hmm. and uh, that time right after our marriage we was in a certain apartment and that time he didn't have an idea you know how far he can be from me at work <laughs> so basically our apartment was like around 15 20 minutes from our place and uh, we kind of filled all the wall there and uh, then it happened that we realized you know he can't come for lunch uh, it gets delayed a lot and many days he have to miss coming for lunch and like kind of ha- eat from out and that's something we don't like you know um from the time we are together we always try to have all the meals together so uh, then we shifted to an, a different apartment so by that time that the was walls... like we uh, we calculate like max to max 7 minutes from work yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that time we were in ministry so then we uh, moved to another apartment which was like right 7 minutes from his work so uh, again we started painting the walls there and um, w- walls and all. Uh, terrace and yeah, all everything that. the terrace the walls all the uh, nice places we can get even the floors and all and um, of course all our, uh, you know the flatmates are very um, very loving because uh, when we see people from the other apartments like uh, you know like our neighbors and all they do come and they even left us uh, letters writing you know messages uh, like okay we enjoyed and your the watchman report. told us that you are the ones who did the painting and it gives us a nice experience going there to the you know like we have the swimming pool area on top so like we have a very beautiful experience going there you know after work we'll come there and we'll sit there and we'll observe your work and we feel so happy after that so, so these <laughs> kind of messages are also very inspiring you know like, yeah <laughs> and then of course again he shifted his work he started working with a gbm that is ibm here so then again uh, we shifted the apartment now the apartment is again like 7 minutes from the new work place and we have started with the walls here almost but this time we covered one work um, one work we had yeah. to uh, repaint and yeah. then now we were we are planning to do a, a bigger one so yeah. that is and something we had even uh, painted the floors that also we remove quite a bit because uh, sometimes uh, we have a cat you know like uh, he's a main part of our house so <laughs> he enjoys <laughs> like rolling over the paint and so, he always ends up being with red green blue colors so we have to be a bit careful about what we keep open <laughs> so that's how we do like we try to uh, make uh, you know a painting and if possible we will not uh, clear it off but sometimes we have we'll to just let yeah. it stay like this one there uh, it is there from the moment we shifted to this apartment and that's like around 2 to 1 and a half years now and uh, even uh, our swimming pool area and all we try to work there and uh, just as i said like you know people also enjoy us never a time has anyone told us you know don't paint this area not the <laughs> but uh, but uh, to paint outside uh, for practice and all it's restricted uh, so we can't do anything on the road or anywhere yeah. any place outside and it's very hot outside too yeah. because uh, since we are in berlin around 6 months it's very hot it's very uh, the, the summer, summer is very, is very yeah, harsh very harsh yeah. gets around 40 to 50 so and uh, winter is also you know and the winter is harsh too yeah. even it's not harsh in terms of european winters but still since we are not used to that much cold temperature the winter is and also windy. hard it's very us. windy so yeah. we can't actually work outside much and for so. us it's quite useful for us because we only are there we two are there in our whole entire flat so we have our whole rooms for us you know <laughs> so we work we start from the living room and the living room is covered we move to the first bedroom then we move to the second bedroom we have even colored the kitchen once yes, you know yes yes <laughs> <laughs> all, all possible walls yeah. and floor yeah thank you so this yeah spring we to the question that we talked about earlier the covid thing how has it you know affected your uh, routine since yes you guys have a uh, you know routine or you take out time to go to different events uh, Yeah, you obviously you meet friends and socialize and you wait whole year to meet them or sometimes two years so how has uh, you know covid uh, affected you since obviously you guys aren't reliant on uh, uh, you know art for uh, a living uh, since i was speaking to different artists uh, some of them like uh, like for instance tracy tracy had uh, you know time for her on you know she had some ideas she wanted to work on so she you know got time and uh, did some 
did her work uh, and made that uh, idea of museum possible that she started recently similarly kareem had uh, you know different plans but uh, you know he went on doing the uh, 365 uh, day art challenge and uh, so he he ended up with making a lot of art so how did you guys cope up with it like because you could not travel to any festival so did you guys uh, you know make art uh, in between and so how how has it affected your routines actually the first thing is uh, the last festival we went to was to work in the 3d museum in uh, florida yeah. that was uh, right before the covid started so we returned on february uh, 2020 after that we haven't been to any uh, chalk festivals as such so uh, of course uh, there was a big boredom that affected us we didn't know what to do in the beginning we were just working at home and we were doing our and mostly uh, for me also it was work from home so we were you know uh, sitting here i mean that's the longest time we have stayed in our uh, any flats you know like we haven't stayed uh, at home for so long any time every two months or three months we used to travel and uh, our life was like from one travel to the next it used to be like that we always have a pack bags ready and we were always going for trips and chuchu was someone who was wet chuchu is my cat so he was someone who's the who was, who was very happy this. Yeah, he and was he put on a lot of weight you know uh, going from 3 and a half to 4 now he has ended up being 5 and a half kg so <laughs> he is the one who profited a lot from covid <laughs> but yes uh, uh, one of the main uh, change was uh, like she got into education like yeah uh, i started art education that was one dream which we were waiting for quite a long time because uh, as i told you our idea is basically to have more artists in this world have more people interested in 3d painting have more people interested because i do believe that you know if you are an artist it's not necessary you have to be like a fine artist or you have to do painting only but you have to get some art medium with you otherwise your life is just you know you work you do your daily job you come back from work you fight with your wife and you go to sleep and the next day starts again <laughs> because that's not a way you can live and of course then child rearing comes as a big part you're looking after the kids you're going and taking them to school but somewhere you lose your own self we all have an identity Uh, for which this is very important it might not look significant we are not famous people we are not legendary artists or anything but we all have a small role in this world so uh, you need to have a area some art that keeps you happy that keeps you motivated that forces you to work out more that forces you to learn more you know so that's one idea we always had and covid was the reason we started our own art academy like so online uh, online only yeah and i wanted it online because you know i don't see a point in calling out uh, people at my home and you know if it's students or others if they do a art work because they i should be in their comfort zone we had gone to art uh, um, schools before that is when we were kids uh, our parents used to put up into these uh, you know like the art school kind of setup you have in uh, in the like it's a tuition facility that is after class after school you'll go to an art class once a week or twice a week and you learn from a sir he will teach you what to do how to do but the thing we always notice that time is if you make a error he will just come correct it by himself that is in our paper he will correct it and then say yeah now it looks fine and then he will move out mm-hmm. but um, that will make us feel like oh all our work are ending up so good we are great artists you know it gives you that unnecessary confidence so that was one thing which i didn't want my kids to have because i always believe that you know you need to make errors to perfect yourself if you think that you're good enough you will never learn you won't be ready to accept that you know we can make mistakes too we have to learn and more they will uh, on they will learn only when they correct themselves yeah. like uh, with the help of a teacher teacher can only teacher should only guide them yeah. not uh, do it on their paper and so. i said uh, that marriage has been a very important thing for me to realize that because uh, when i before marriage i used to feel that you know fine artists were the only perfect artists in the world i uh, that was my notion of seeing the world and i used to correct everyone if i see an abstract artist i'll give them lectures on being fine artists <laughs> so that is again another thing that came to my mind when i started the art academy that if i uh, sit up and start correcting them there might be some artist who's meant to be a very good abstract artist and i change their basic you know that talent that they have 
so i didn't want to interfere with that also so that's one reason i wanted the academy to be online i will teach them the techniques i will show the method that i do the techniques with and they can adapt in their own means if their strokes are different if their strokes are a bit pointy that is okay but they should know about the strokes yeah. they should know about uh, all these techniques they should know the right tools and I how to use them i always give them the uh, example of picasso you know like i always tell them picasso knew how to make a proper portrait and then he experimented and got into cubism it's not like you know he didn't know how to draw that's why he ended up making cubism that is not the theory so first you learn about art you explore all the means so i try to put in two things there one is i always give them lectures on the legendary artists like rafael or michelangelo or da vinci so every one we every month we will have one artist taken up we will study his work we will go through his life and things like that and the second thing is i call them uh, um it through zoom meetings just like you to meet up our artist friends so i will just see who is available during that month and i will just request them to give a talk to my students so that you know they become inspired by their style so we have uh, people who work in different different fields we have art restorers we have illustrators we have graphic designers we have people who work with comics so uh, we do have people from all the fields so i always think one of that artist might change their life you know like because uh, yeah. maybe we won't be uh, an inspiration for them but someone else might be Yeah. so that is what we always think so that is a major change during covid so now we have completed one year during august uh, i started in last august 2020 and the saga set was first day of one year completely done and uh, we are very happy and uh, satisfied with it because uh, and one more thing is you know you end up going to the basics when you start an academy sometimes you also realize you know you were uh, so much uh, driven from all these things somewhere or the other you have this proud feeling inside your mind you know i am also a great artist but then you even uh, it happened to, to me like when when she uh, started uh, giving the gouache uh, uh training so that is the time when i realized oh man i am not been using these things for a long time and then suddenly like it be, uh, i realized like uh, i started using it and uh, i was not able to draw and yeah, yeah this is trialed <laughs> yeah so i made one uh, trial uh, yeah. using gouache so went back to basics <laughs> and is it like you know it's when we go back to the basics that we realize you know like uh, things require constant practice there yeah. is nothing nothing like you know you have perfected yourself or like you know you even learn one theory is not a right way of saying even uh, after drawing this actually uh, if you see a lot there are a lot of defects so yeah. this one i will not uh, realize if i just sit and uh, you know think okay i am a good artist no i i can see myself like when i started exploring it the the color balance and everything is uh, you know i had to explore a lot so uh, this is when we go back to the teaching part like yeah. when she went back to teaching part that is and one even when we started making the curriculum for it uh, i was very uh, see uh, i have gone to art classes for around like 10 years that is like all my primary education secondary education i have gone to art schools and uh, all that time uh, one thing we see is like it's an endless procedures there is no modules there is no uh, theoretical you know like a proper curriculum and you are just learning for like a lifetime and you don't know what you are learning exactly because sometimes what happens is a teacher leaves the town and uh, then another one comes in and they will start from another area that is totally different from the way you were doing and uh, so that's why i uh, we started sitting together and formulating a curriculum which uh, starts from the basic goes to the intermediary and then reaches the uh, the top level or the level that you know you understand everything in that particular topic and we always tell the kids art is not something you can it's not limited yeah it's, it's not, not something you can learn in one year if i say you can learn the basics of sketch and draw in one year or you can learn the basics of madonari art or the soft pastels one in one year that means it's only the basics so you have to put your Practice. time your effort even if i promise you that you can complete it in one year it completely depends on you how much effort you will put into it then you will end up being a good artist there. then you have to go to the next field it doesn't means that you will learn soft pastel so you now you can start with oil painting it doesn't work that way. so all the fields you need to have a basic a intermediate level and a master level of knowledge so that is the way we have modulated our curriculum and it's going pretty well because uh, we have students from like uh, all of the middle east and we have students from european countries we have students from india so it's it's nice even sri lanka so it's nice and uh, it makes you happy it keeps your days busy and uh, since it's online you can be anywhere in the world and take the classes you don't have to miss a class because you're traveling or you're going somewhere you can still take the class wherever you are <laughs> 
right i actually didn't know about uh, the academy bit and uh, i'm very surprised uh, to know and uh, you know that you're doing uh, you're running an academy online academy so many congratulations on that and you know completing uh, a year and best wishes uh, to you both for uh, the academy and uh, what you're doing with you know the students that you're getting so I really, you know, liked your approach, or right? like hearing about your approach that you, you know, take in uh, your students. So since we we have been, and a way actually, it's a very funny thing because I was about to call you as the guest artist of the month. We had just discussed about it, and uh, that's exactly when you approached me. <laughs> yeah, that is what. Does. And I was just oh, telling him. Oh, I was just thinking about calling him the next month, and he ended up talking to me. So that is anyways. Uh, oh, that, well, I I feel honored that you you know got me worthy of you know sharing my experiences uh, with your students. So uh, many thanks for that, and uh, inshallah I will join you whenever you know you would want me to. So so we've been like speaking for more than an uh, more than an hour now and uh, i've been like enjoying your know, listening to your you know uh, journey and uh, how you how you've been you know uh, how you enjoyed your journey and you're enjoying your journey obviously it's very visible the way you guys are talking and talking so and telling or narrating your experiences so obviously it's uh, i think it's every artist uh, to do that to enjoy their work so um, so i just have uh, this uh, very uh, i think like two questions more like since you've uh, dealt with or uh, you know experienced different cultures and you've uh, you know painted in different countries and uh, experienced different audiences so uh, how you know how you have found uh, audiences different in like in europe and usa and since you guys are in middle east uh, and you've been to india as well so i'm sure india pakistan audiences are pretty similar i might uh, relate to what you will you know talk about india but uh, how have the audiences been uh, different in different parts of the world and how do you know, how do they you know uh, react to the art that you guys create because uh, i have like i've had like very funny experiences here in pakistan like some thought that the techniques we use are incorrect because uh, we cannot see the illusions with uh, the naked eye and uh, when i went to europe and uh, saw the artist working using the same techniques then i was like uh, became sure that uh, the techniques that i am using are uh, correct so how like this is one of the experience that i had with the audiences so what uh, your what what are your experiences with audiences different places uh, you know different artworks Uh, so uh, actually, uh, in uh, each uh, in each place, uh, like uh, what we found is like there are uh, some people they really uh, you know they really enjoy uh, seeing art. Like they come every day and uh, you know see how it is getting progressed, and uh, you know they have their own expectations. Some of them. Uh, explain so there are people like that who who really appreciate and this happens in countries yeah. mostly uh, where they don't speak english also yeah so uh, they will so come, they sometimes bring yeah. us something i think we are very <laughs> identifiable you know so they will end up seeing us every year and then telling us like you know oh you were working there last time how come you got this plot this year <laughs> they were like no we get assigned different different plots every so year so this is one type of like uh, yeah. uh, especially they love you a lot yeah. they will give you uh, like you know they will bring foods for you and they are like oh you're working in the sun you need to apply sunscreen every now and then don't forget that and they will tell you about their they climate they will care about us yeah, yeah they will tell you about their climate they will say like you know since it's cold here you might not put the sunscreen but that's not the case you have to reapply it every 3 hours or so so they will give you instructions also and especially some old people they 
they care a lot more you know? yeah there are people who even uh, sit with us you know they will come uh, every day they will sit with us when we are working for around one hour to uh, talk to us just look at our work and they even you are asking in between is it okay if we they will, talk they to will you? not be much into photograph uh, yeah. photography but they will be more Taking into the live experience and there are people like that and those are the ones we enjoy a lot with yeah. and uh, of course people are mostly very curious as to what's happening and of course the question that you said you know like uh, they will always ask you like uh, how can you call it 3d when we can't see it with the eyes <laughs> yeah then uh, sometimes they think that okay the pain gives the 3d feel you know they they ask us okay, okay you're using a different type of paint so that's why it appears 3d you know and there are people and then it happens <laughs> that you know you have to see through the 3d lens and they will take their phone and uh, put it they will put the uh, phone in the 3d lens and then try to take a picture from that and then uh, there are, see one of the people which uh, you know i think every artist uh, will hate is uh, the the people who are uh, you know confident with photography because mm. some of the photographers even if we design a perspective <laughs> for this for our painting we decide okay this is the perspective point and this is where uh, the perspective height is they will that is always, one point they will never stand they will never stand they are not at all convinced okay this is not the right place the, i am a photographer i know us we will show them <laughs> that this is the perspective you need to stand here you need to look through here that's only when you will see the 3d impact they will go to all the they places. will go to all of the uh, points except that and they will take the photo and they will say that Uh, this is not uh, you know it's not uh, looking 3d because they are not uh, standing at the perspective so these kind of people are always there yeah. then uh, there is another category who really you know don't find value in it value in art at all like they find it okay i mean i just uh, maybe uh, they came for a festival uh, they paid uh, the entrance fee or something and then like okay what is this these guys are just painting some we just nonsense. wasted our money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's kind yeah, of that funny. kind of people are also there but uh, when uh, we go for festivals mostly we find people who are more, more interested and more appreciative but when the, the other kind you mostly see is in malls and places yeah. like that where people just pass through their daily life in malls they, yeah in malls uh, they will people, give you a glimpse and they will make a face also at times yeah. you know that's something you never understand why they are looking like that at all. yeah so it's the uh, same like uh, you know you enjoy uh, going for a movie so you watch movie you you are going for that so you love it and you enjoy it but Uh, uh otherwise uh, if you're just uh, displaying a movie somewhere you know projecting a movie somewhere there will be pe- people just passing by they just okay oh, well, okay i can watch it in my home or youtube that's it so i think that's the attitude but one thing is there like uh, people um, even though there are a lot different kind of people but uh, basically what we understood is like uh, people are same everywhere <laughs> <laughs> to be frank like uh, the differences which we bring in in terms of all these uh, you know barriers it doesn't matter much because uh, in uh, we have seen people who care there there we have seen people who don't don't care at all there are people uh, you know even uh, uh, when we talk about india there are people who uh, you know peop- uh, see uh, everyone else as uh, separate and you know the only their kind of like uh, you know that sectarian type and all that but there are people who think about you like you know oh uh, can you come and paint our home yeah, like and we were thinking like are you asking about a painting to be done in the entire paint, house paint the wall like we have our wall so it's self spoiled so can you come and <laughs> that's paint? something which we never expect <laughs> like they are they are, they think that they are giving uh, uh, they are not respecting art they yeah. are giving uh, they are thinking that okay we are giving a free place to paint so that itself is an op- opportunity for you guys you know like people who consider But that there is always <laughs> enough positive people to be happy with you know yeah. so you don't really need to uh, get worried about the a uh, little bit negative things that you come across there are many people who love you there are many people who care for you there are many people who are not even artist but they are such uh, ardent followers of uh, chalk festival that um, nowadays if anything happen at our place like uh, during covid uh, when situation started getting bad in india Uh, i we got had, a lot of messages coming in there, i like, had all my artist friends contacting me but uh, i also had people who were just art lovers contacting us and asking us know, they were they were just audience i mean they were just uh, i have to tell you there were people who were ready to even you know provide us funds thinking that you know maybe we are in some kind of trouble and then we have to tell them like no we are not really affected by 
covid thankfully we concerned about us there were people and those were like uh, real concern you know and i always think it's about uh, connecting the world <laughs> this is and just... and family like that uh, family feel that is something which matters most yeah. like it doesn't matter where you are from or uh, uh, where you belong to or it's not your real family but uh, still that connection that is something and and it happened like uh, a couple of uh, you know our friends uh, they uh, they passed away in this uh, years uh, some of the artist friends and even the organizing uh, um, uh, people that like affects you really bad because yeah. those are the people you had your food with those are the people you had fun with when you went the festival and suddenly you lose them and you kind of can't we know that next year when we go for the festival we will not meet them for yeah, sure yeah i had a, actually a very a close person and uh, we lost her recently and uh, i couldn't even talk to a partner for quite a bit you know even convey that uh, we lost her because we couldn't just believe it and uh, um, that uh, those kind of experience really affects you really bad and uh, uh, she was someone i used to look forward when i go to sarasota like uh, they would come to meet us you know and they will have uh, we would talk and uh, say that okay we'll meet you next year now and mm-hmm. such losses are hard to forget uh, then there comes to uh, if you come to india uh, when we really work in india we have seen that there are many people who think that it's not right to talk to us they would think like you know uh, we are not supposed to be disturbed or we are not supposed to be about our artworks and so they are even scared kind yeah. of <laughs> so those kind of people are also there so they will they will appreciate everything but uh, they will be a little scared to talk to i think being from this part of the world we think a lot before talking <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that kind of people are also there yes yeah. a lot of different types yes. and each one uh, like as she is more into you know books and stuff so yeah. she always said, like each one will have their own story and uh, each one uh, each person which you meet they will have their own book <laughs> you know yeah. a book to read from their life story so <laughs> it's really good you know like uh, have this i love people a lot actually and i love interacting with them and talking with them and trying to find out what their life you know how interesting it is everything is interesting because we have got a chance to live in this world and we need to make the best of it yes that that's right that's right okay so this brings me to my you know last question you've given uh, a lot of your time so uh, this is my this my final question so where do you guys like uh, what's next for you guys uh, like is there a, a one festival that you not been to uh, what are your plans next with obviously with art uh, what are you you know going to do with art or uh, is there a festival that you want to go to in general where are where, where are you guys heading with art and and obviously along with that i'll just add another question with that so since you guys uh, have a different job and uh, since obviously the rimesh has a different job than art uh, and you guys do it for fun so what would be your uh, you know uh, message for the people who you know who who have a passion for uh, art but uh, they are you know into different things or doing different stuff so and they want to do it but they are afraid to do it so what would your advice be to them uh, this agency has covered it before but since uh, i would appreciate uh, at the end that you would you know both of you you know give a little piece of advice to the people who are afraid of trying art uh so first thing is uh, what um we uh, dream always about is traveling and painting you know like uh so one thing which we want to do like uh, is that uh, we want to take an rv uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, like we want to travel everywhere like and do paintings and uh, live in that rv and uh, you know like uh, travel to each place and uh, do painting and that uh, imagine if there was no borders you know like then uh, we can travel freely everywhere without passport with uh, no you know uh, no restrictions what so what we stream about like you know getting enough funds working for like another 5 10 years uh, yeah. making us quite equipped and then like you know 
uh, really traveling and painting and of course uh, we always have this dream that uh, more people should come to india so uh, we have this um, set up in india we always uh, see we don't have kids and we don't believe in having kids so uh, we always have this uh, idea that um, um maybe when we are old enough we should have this kind of a nice uh, village set up where any artist can come in they can paint what they want they can live there for a while if they want they are interested they can take a projects there and uh, we want to provide such a kind of place there and also we will have a lot many kids there who will uh, actually like you know especially the ones who are plus 18 because 18 is an age when we don't consider when... that as an uh, orphanage or anything yeah. but uh, it's like uh, because uh, having a uh, different uh, parents like yeah. we will be we and as well as well as like whoever who can stay there they will be their parents for that time so, so it's basically be... like having uh, many kids of your own and uh, we would and especially the ones you're not even looking for younger kids because there are orphanages who take care of children till the age of 18 but after 18 uh, they do, they can't stay there any longer so we were like uh, maybe and they are not fully equipped to uh, you know uh, you know live outside on yeah. their own too. because we so, have seen that personally so. so we always thought like we were especially the ones who are interested in art we will just give them an opportunity to explore more there of course we do need a lot of funding to go ahead with such an idea but if everything works out fine that is what we plan that we will have such a uh, institution in a nice village area with lots of trees and nature and everything and uh, there are kids who are 18 plus who can study like we can sponsor the education they can get into arts they can get into creative area, like you know like graphic designing and things like that especially the ones who are really good at it they will get an a uh, chance to go ahead with it of course they don't have to call us mummies and daddies we are okay with it they can call us anything they want <laughs> they can consider us to be friends or parents or anything <laughs> artist friends who are interested in you know supporting a idea or being part of it they can come in they can visit the place they can stay for a month with them they can explore a place our town and of course uh, go back to their own life or stay here whatever they feel like so that is one idea we that have and along have. with that we will also like to travel and also do a lot of painting in every possible place we can So hmm. this is basically our idea, and the nearest yes, plan is yes, uh, to paint in Arctic. <laughs> yeah, to paint in Arctic. That is one of the uh, dream projects which we have in mind. Like uh, to travel to you know that uh, those there are a lot of uh, limitations we know, but still, we if that is possible, then we should do that. Then definitely, I always uh, dream about uh, you know uh, traveling to because uh, when we talk about India and Pakistan. it's yeah. it's brothers but yeah, that's uh, they, a very big dream actually yeah but that uh, but we were not able to travel like a lot of uh, restrictions uh, like we were we always born you know uh, and even uh, here my friends and all like yeah, we love uh, biryani i mean uh, pakistani that's biryani that's what like uh, you you never really realize all these things till you see the news yeah <laughs> you have so, to see the news and then you oh there are issues there okay i do understand now there are issues there <laughs> so we really would like to travel and you know travel and explore same like because it's it's the same we place always after, had yeah. this idea about having a uh, indian in india pakistan union kind of painting even so <laughs> we always dream of coming back to uh, pakistan Pakistan and like you know having a possibility of doing a 3D painting there, so that uh, we can surely pass out this message that we are one. No matter what, because see sometimes you know uh, siblings have this rivalry and it ha- happens always. Uh, you are from the same family and uh, then someone from outside comes in and splits you into two, and you never realize it and you end up being enemies for your entire life without even knowing. Without even knowing the reason. You are the reason. same. <laughs> yeah, you are all the same. Like you are all same, and then. Uh, this thing um, like a uh, border cannot uh, you know differentiate us and because... after a certain limit it's just political beneficial thing you know it's not beneficial for the people who stay inside people are always concerned about their daily living and uh, their life and all yeah. that so they are not concerned they are concerned only about their job and savings and the kids education and healthcare and all that so yeah. once ever if we are if we get a chance to visit pakistan we would like to do a painting there too yeah. and then our long term retirement plan is what we told you <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for the future uh, yeah uh, the advice which we uh, have to give is like first uh, first thing study study like don't restrict yourself to any particular medium or anything like any technique but uh, study well like uh, uh, explore the maximum you can um, 
and go to yeah. and i would also say like you know uh, before taking finance as your main profession even though it would sound very really bad but i would say like you know have a alternative profession in hand because sometimes when you want to earn money using art it kind of uh, affects your objectives it kind of affects your vision you have to sacrifice in your vision and you know let others decide for you but if you have another alternative if you have another profession that can uh, earn for you give you that money then you really don't need to listen to anyone to uh, do your loving you know what you love you can do it you don't need, really need to listen to anyone so in that case i love uh, indian upbringing or like you know the south asian upbringing where our parents force us to become engineers doctors and accountants and then uh, when you grow up when you get a job on your own that's how you turn into arts so i will ask everyone get a preliminary art education from a young age if you are interested in painting go to these art clubs uh, art schools and art tuitions but uh, take up a good profession a alternate profession work through it if you want if you are really like into art then work for like 10 years earn for yourself get a nice bank saving and then leave it out and go for your art that's as simple as it is yeah so that will give you the security and the stability and also the power to decide for yourself like not uh, a sponsor will decide for you no you can decide for yourself only when you work under a sponsor do you understand how difficult it is you know so it's always nice to have a money back for your own so get a profession also along with that that is something which we have to <laughs> right it's that's a very very uh, you know good 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 advice so again uh, thank you very much you guys have given me so much time and really enjoyed you know listening to you guys and your experiences uh, some of the things were very surprising for me uh you know it's really good to connect with you guys uh, and you know know your story because we've been in touch for a while now and uh, we've been connected on facebook for a while so it was really uh, good for me or uh, enjoyable for me and i've you know learned a lot uh, from your experience listening to your experiences as well that uh, you know how to you know react in certain situations and uh, so thank you again very very much uh, for your time both of you so if you have anything else to say you can you know you can say it now and uh, then we'll just wrap it up <laughs> yeah so thanks a lot uh, obit for giving us this opportunity actually uh, you know uh, it was a pleasure like on especially during this time yeah. uh, when we get a chance to talk to another fellow artist it actually feels very good you know right it actually feels like reconnecting with the world so uh, we are really privileged that you gave us a chance to have this talk uh, and you have this nice uh, platform too which is really nice because artists can come and like you know uh, they can all uh, Just, be their own yeah, yeah. be their, be own, their and... own and give you their part of life and how it's going about for them they, they can just give you an instruction on that and it's even realize you know we are talking for so long <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just like you know when uh, our conversation so it's it's good <laughs> yeah, thank you so much thank you thank you so much sure i really enjoyed talking to you so thank you again and it was a pleasure talking to you guys Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.